All right, here's the um, solutions to the solution to the first problem of our uh, practice problem for impulse and momentum. So here we have um, a tennis ball being hit by a tennis racket, causing it to change direction. Um, and uh, we're asking a series of questions. So let's do part A, draw a before and after picture. Well, I've already drawn these, so let me um, paste them in. Um, here they are. There. Okay. So uh, we have a before and after. Before is here. We're going to have the tennis ball moving to the right in the positive x direction. And after the collision, the um, ball is moving in the negative x direction. Um, okay. So let's do part B. The ball remains in contact with the racket for... Um, 0.02 seconds. What is the magnitude of the average force experienced by the ball? Well, for this um, problem, we use uh, what we know about impulse. So the impulse, J, is equal to um, force times delta T. Now, this is going to be our average force. And we also know that impulse is the change in momentum. Um, so, we're first going to calculate the change in momentum, because we want to get our hands on the average force. So the change in momentum is equal to the final momentum minus the initial um, momentum. And um, really, this is just going to be the change, uh, well, the mass times the change in V. So V is actually changing direction, but the magnitude is kept the same. So when we compute this, this becomes the change in V is minus 15 minus 15. So we have mass, which is 0 0.065 kilograms times negative 30 meters per second. All right. Now, that change in momentum... Um, I believe should be um, negative 1.95 kilograms meters per second. Okay, so that's our change in momentum, uh, and we know that from uh, this equation up here, that the average force is equal to the change in momentum over a change in time. So uh, now we just plug in uh, what we know. Uh, the change in momentum we just calculated, negative 1.95 kilograms meters per second, and we divide by 0 0.02 seconds. And if you look, uh, we're going to get units of kilograms, meters per second squared, which is new, uh, newtons. And you do the math, you should get negative 97.5 newtons. So that is the average force on the ball. The negative sign means it's to the left and the negative x direction. So if we were to draw that on... Um, on our axis, the force would have to be um, in that direction. All right, so uh, there's part B. Let's look at part C. So here we're given the force versus time graph for this interaction, um, and we're asked to find F max. So the, the trick here is to note that... Um, impulse J is equal to the area um, under the curve. Okay, so what we want is this area here. Uh, we've computed J um, above. J is this change in momentum we, we computed in part B, and we're, we're going to take its magnitude. So we have... Um, Oh, uh, what do we have? We have um, J is equal to the area under the curve. The area under the curve is one-half times the base, which is delta T, 
times the height, which is our f max, which is, that's the quantity we're, we are wanting. So we can solve for f max. This is just j times 2 over delta t. So it's 2 times j. Remember, we want the absolute value of it. One, negative 1 1.95 kilograms meters per second. And we divide by our time. Um, and again, look at the units. You're going to end up with newtons. Um, and when you plug all those numbers in your calculator, you should get um, 195 um, newtons. Note that our average velocity, uh, sorry, our average force is, in magnitude anyways, half of what our maximum is. Uh, this is actually to be expected because their force is a, it's a linear interaction, so we expect the average to be just half, uh, especially since we're starting at zero and we're um, reaching a maximum value at f max. Okay, that's uh, it. And I'll, I'll zoom out again so you can see the whole um, page.